Hello and welcome to the Game Week 26 edition of the FPL School Podcast. I am your host Matthias. With me today I have uh, a guy with shades on and that is uh, Kevin. His future is bright even though his FPL uh, fortunes haven't been as bright lately. Because this has been uh, pretty much a disaster game week for a lot of people, but especially for Kevin. Uh, <laughs> just a pretty terrible game week. We all expected to have El Goddamn Dorado in game week 26, or game week 25, I should say. But then we ended up with uh, everyone being turned into zombies. So, yeah, Kevin, how is life going? How is FPL life going? How is uh, the weather over there with the shades and all that stuff? Uh, what's up with you? <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, it's been a pitiful, pitiful game week um, to the verge of maybe I should just give up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just kidding. It's these things happen. I was going for our El Dorado, and uh, what I ended up getting was something pretty horrible. <laughs> 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 Should we just go straight into it? Look at your score yeah, for this yeah, game yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Kevin's giving 25 score, 64 points, uh, despite having triple captain Holland. I think before the game week started, you would have expected almost 64 points from Holland alone. But uh, Diogo Jota injured, uh, four points for him. Pinnock was injured for some reason before the game week, even though there were no news about him being injured, which also messes you up for game week 29 because you don't have your free to wall card left. Uh, De Bruyne ended up not playing the second game, only played the first game where he got two points. Uh, you sold Solanke with 12 points to get Tony with seven points. Good thing about that is the fact that Tony plays in 29 at least, but then you don't have Solanke for game 28 where he doubles against Luton and Sheffield United. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, the game here for you. Blank for Stepinian, blank for Dubrovka, two points for him. Fulton got five points, two blanks in a row for him. Darwin, five points, he got one goal, and then he had to be subbed off with an injury. Didn't play the second game. Juan actually ended up getting 10 points at least on the triple captaincy, being 30 points for you. And for most of us, to be honest, that was the least of your worries, because most of us did triple captain Holland for 30 points, which is, meh, not what you were hoping for, but still decent, I guess, ish, acceptable, maybe. Um, so yeah, what's the feeling about Gaming 25 and uh, what could have been done, done differently? What went wrong? Uh, yeah, take it away. I mean, Salah in was one of the things that I proposed to you with Archer and he still got injured and re-aggravated an injury. And uh, so I would have gone minus there. Um, Solanke might have been a bit of a hasty move, but it was just... Tony can score in these sort of games and did and did, yeah. came close and should have gone a few assists and could have maybe even scored another goal. So I don't feel too bad about that. Um, the plan was always to bring Solanke back in. And we said that in previous podcasts. And I think it was fair to go with Vode and De Bruyne and all on yeah. and like really backing them. And obviously with Darwin and Jota, because the first goal that Liverpool scored in that game was them linking up and it was a brilliant goal. I mean, the assist from Jota and um, the chip from Darwin is just unbelievable. Yeah, great goal. Just a great shame that both got injured exactly at the wrong time, essentially. Yeah, yeah pretty much something. Sometimes you just can't uh, prepare for stuff like that because most of your game, double game week players, you would expect to play both games, especially Jota and Darwin, uh, De Bruyne as well. Only played one game. Foden blanking twice, even though he scored a hat trick against Brentford last time. He did nothing this time. He had one really big chance as well. He really should have scored that. And De Bruyne really should have had an assist for Holland in the first game as well. So even without um, the double game weeks, the double game week players playing two matches, they still could have had a lot more points. Darwin and Jota as well. Um, yeah, obviously with the injuries that hampered them. Four goals against Luton as well without them uh, on the pitch would have been something to have them. Uh, Luis Diaz, Alexis McAllister, those types of guys got a lot of points. But... The main guys that most people went for, Jota and Darwin, are people that did not live up to expectations. And now Jota's out for a long while. Darwin is someone you were looking to sell anyway. Um, I, th I guess you would say the same for Jota as well. But either way, disappointing game week, but just got to move on from it and look forward to the future, which is going to be a tough one for game 26 as well with the blank game week. But we'll get to that at the end of the podcast. 
Let's move on to someone who had a bit bit of a better game week, and that is Kimo. Scored 90 points minus the four point hit he took to bring in Ake for Poro, and once again, a double game week player not playing in two games, only playing one game. Ake getting two points in the first game and not playing at all in the second game for two points. Bradley at least played the second game as well, got four points in total, so four points earned from that move at least for Kimo, but he also had Saka, 15 points, Watkins, 13 points. Those are the types of players that you don't have in your team anymore. You had them uh, not too long ago, uh, but you sold them around that time when most people were looking to potentially sell them as well, when they, were, they weren't really producing that many points and stuff. And then after you sold them, both of them have just exploded completely. So <laughs> yeah, it's just been that kind of a season, uh, basically. But for Kimo, he brought, uh, brought those points in uh, to the fold as well. Also got eight points from Gordon, which is uh, huge from him. Uh, Gordon playing at home is always dangerous. And uh, other than that, yeah, Foden blanking. Jota and Darwin injured, like everyone else uh, that had both of those guys. Tripper with one point. Um, yeah, not really too much to write home about there either. But mind points for Kimo. He also has his wildcard and free hit left. Uh, are you a bit jealous of Kimo or uh, are you fine with where you are? Uh, serious question? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a serious question. Uh, he has a couple of advantages compared to you, but uh, either way, looking at Kimo's team and, and commenting on his team as well, now he's sold Peter Poro as well, so he doesn't have any players basically for Game 29. I think he has uh, Watkins and Konsa if he's fit, which is probably not going to happen, and Ariola. I think those are the only three Game 29 players he has. So I assume, like me, you, you assume that he would use his free at the Game 29, right? Yeah. I think so. It does look that way. Um, anyone that you're not jealous of in this team? Any player that you sort of would get rid of if you had him yourself? Apart from the ones you have, Jota, Darwin, and those guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's pretty much it. I think this is a pretty stellar team. Especially now that Newcastle looking better as well. But... Yeah, I don't have that big columns with this team. Yep. There's a big reason why he got 90 points. So, yeah, decent. Yeah, uh, we're going to look at his moves as well at the end of the podcast. And I think they're pretty obvious, at least uh, the striker move. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Gordon and Trippier could have had more points as well. Trippier had a really nice like volley assist for Gordon where he just basically struggled with his header and headed it down into the floor and then out. But... Yeah, could have been even more points for Kimo, but 90 points, you got to be happy with, about that in this game week where a lot of people struggled. So, yeah, pretty good game week for Kimo as well. Let's move on to the predictions. And here is actually somewhere where we both did pretty well this week. We basically had a lot of the same uh, predictions. So, of course, we sort of did similarly well. I had one more correct uh, scoreline, though, which is the final game of the game week, Liverpool against Luton, the 4-1 uh, match there. You didn't expect Luton to score, and to be honest, looking at that game, uh, you were probably right, because uh, Liverpool were sort of the best team in that uh, that game by far. Yeah. Uh, Alfie Dotti, the useless guy, got one point in the double game week and got injured at the end of it, so at least you don't have him. You can at least uh, take solace in the fact that you didn't go for the Alfie Dotti hype, at least, because uh, yeah, he's been nothing but a disappointment for me in these last two game weeks, at least. By the way, uh, seven correct results for both of us. I got three correct scorelines. Fulham, Aston Villa, which you got as well. 2-1 for Aston Villa. Luton against Man United. 2-1 for Man United. We both got correct on that one. And then Liverpool against Luton. I had 4-1. You had 4-0. Uh, so yeah, pretty good uh, predictions in, in general. The ones that we did miss were uh, Everton against Palace. We both expected Everton to win. That ended up being a 1-1 draw, disappointingly. Um, Man City, Chelsea. We don't uh, did not expect um, Chelsea to hold firm and get the, the draw against Man City. So that happened. We both didn't expect either Wolves to beat Spurs. And I think that's maybe my most surprising game because I, like Chelsea have been good in these big games and they drew against Man City earlier in the season. So it doesn't really surprise me that much. But Wolves away to Spurs, I would still expect Spurs to win that game. But Wolves have also sort of stepped up in big games. And I think Spurs, for as many injury, injuries that they've had this season with Van de Ven being out, Romero being out, Madison being out, all those guys being out, Son being out to Asian Cup, I think their fullbacks are super important to what they do uh, in Spurs. So, so I think that's my biggest takeaway from this this game week with Poro and Odogi being out 
and Spurs need them back pretty quickly, I think, for, for them to be still pretty good. But yeah, we both missed Nottingham Forest West Ham. Obviously, West Ham lost that game as well. You had a win for West Ham, I had a draw, so at least I was closer with that. And we both expected Newcastle to beat Bournemouth, but Bournemouth were actually the team that were pretty close to winning that game as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the game week uh, in general. What stood out to you this uh, double game week, uh, apart from the FPL things, obviously, uh, the injuries and all that stuff, but in terms of the results and the teams against each other, what stood out to you this game week? Yeah, as far as Wolves, definitely. I think that game, how did they end up winning and how did some legend just score a brace? Like, what's going on? And why is Richarlison missing chances for fun now no, from no. scoring in it? Scoring in many games in a row to now missing key one on one chances. It's a shame. Big shame. Because I have him in my fancy team. Yeah. I mean, it is classic Richarlison, though. That's sort of what he has been doing back in the day at Everton as well. He had those like purple patches where he scored a lot of goals and was amazing. And he is amazing in like a lot of aspects in the game as well, apart from scoring. Uh, but yeah, that's just what happens with Richarlison sometimes. But I still think he's a good asset playing as a striker for Spurs. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people sell him and personally if I had him at this point I probably wouldn't have sold him um, even if I was walk or free hitting in 29 because I think they have pretty decent fixtures in 27, 28 uh, and beyond that as well but of course if you're in a, in a pinch and you have to sell either him or Palmer for example this week I will sell Richardson but uh, most people most likely have Jota so they can sell him instead I guess so, so yeah but yeah I think it just comes down to what is uh, what I said about Spurs uh, the fact that they need Idoge and Poro not just because those guys are really good fullbacks but also because Davies and Emerson Real are just not not it it's such a big downgrade that yeah it, it hampers them quite a lot I think and, and Wolves are really good to be fair to Wolves as well um, so I, could, I wouldn't be too surprised about the, the result actually because Wolves are actually a really good team especially with Handsome Hong back and he's like the talk of the town now for Game 26 which is uh, kind of interesting didn't expect that I did mention Huang as an option long long time ago for Game 26 and now a lot of people are jumping on that bandwagon and also jumping on the free hits 20, 29 bandwagon that I've been sort of hyping up as well the last few weeks. So that's kind of interesting to see at least. But yeah, um, let's move on to the predictions for next week. A lot less matches this time around with uh, the blank game week. Several teams not playing this game week. Spurs, Chelsea, Luton and uh, one more team. I forgot who it is uh, in the midst of things. By the way, uh, let's just quickly go through the results that we've predicted. Uh, Aston Villa against Nottingham Forest. I have a 2-1 Aston Villa win. You have a 3-1 Aston Villa win. Pretty similar there. Brighton Everton. Once again, you have more faith in Everton than, uh, than I do. You have 2-1 for Everton against Brighton away. And we've seen Everton turn up against Brighton before. So it could happen. Um, I have 1-1 though. I think it's going to be pretty even. Just like the game earlier in the season and then 1-1. So I think that's going to happen again. Uh, Crystal Palace Burnley I have 2-0 for Crystal Palace you have Burnley drawing 1-1 which I was kind of surprised by because you usually have Burnley losing but you also usually have Palace losing so <laughs> I guess that's why you ended up with 1-1 I guess um, but yeah uh, Man United Fulham we both had 3-1 for Man United Bournemouth City we both had 3-1 for City Arsenal Newcastle I have 3-1 for Arsenal you have 3-2 for Arsenal Wolves Sheffield United we both had 3-0 Wolves and West Ham Brentford I have 2-1 for Brentford. I don't think West Ham will win that game either. And you have 1-1, which, uh, once again, putting some faith in my West Ham guys. But, but yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, what stands out to you in uh, the upcoming game week, apart from just the blank and players not playing and stuff? Um, any games you're looking forward to in particular in this slate of games? Palace Burnley. Palace Burnley, yeah. The standout pick. Oh, standout game. Standout game. <laughs> Burnley haven't drawn in a while, so it's time. Yeah. They only get draws, so it's time. You think uh, David Dutra Fofana will be uh, the main man? Of course. Yeah. Have you seen him? I said Chelsea should let him play. But yeah. fine, if he's banging it out on loan, he can come to Everton if you like. He's pretty good. I think yeah. so too. He's, he, used, he was in the Norwegian League, so obviously I've seen him play quite a bit back in the day as well when he played for Molde. And uh, his first season there, he was like tipped to be like one of the greatest like talents that ever have been in the league and stuff. But he really struggled the first year. But then once he got acclimatized and stuff and got used to the the different style of play and stuff, 
he became basically the best player in the league. And he's not going to become the best player in the Premier League, but I think he's going to do quite a step up once he actually gets some time to play. So he is actually low-key, even though Burnley, like no one wants to go with Burnley assets, but they do play in game 29. And he is a pretty good player. So, well, low-key an interesting asset, but I think the strikers pretty much write themselves now with Holland, Watkins, Solanke, potentially Tony as well. Like those four guys are pretty much locked. Or Hoyland as well, who's probably a different, interesting guy as well. Because we both had 3-1 Man United here. Who do you expect to score the three goals for Man United in that game? Hoyland. Hoyland hat trick, finally. Mm, brace. I think brace. another brace. Are we going to bring him in? in a... Are we bringing him in though, then? Getting it. Considering it. Yeah. But if I bring him in, he stops scoring. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's. If I do, I, it's going to be the same thing with Watkins, where like, I'm going to triple captain it, and it's not going to work. You can't triple captain anyone anymore, so. I know, but it, you, in you, my you head. You can I'm bench boost. Captain. Maybe he'll bench boost this uh, coming year. <laughs> that's the only chip you have left. Yeah. Bench boost with three players that aren't playing. Yeah. Sure. Winning strategy, I think. Yeah, Pedro Porro just out of nowhere plays. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Who knows? But yeah, that's pretty much it for the games this week. Anything else other than Palace Burnley? You want to comment on this game week, or should we just move on to the weekly walkout draft? I think Arsenal Newcastle is going to be an interesting game, especially after this uh, loss against Porto that not many predicted. Yeah, pretty surprising. Did you see the goal by the way, Galeno? I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you, you're, the gonna highlights... love, you're gonna love it. It's a uh, super Kevin goal. Okay. It's the curler. Okay. The curler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, a really yeah. nice goal, but uh, yeah, huge letdown for Arsenal, and I think that sort of dampens my appeal a bit with Arsenal. Not just the fact that they lost against Porto, like anyone can do that, but just the fact that they have Champions League and they now have to stress about the next Champions League fixture and stuff. It's probably gonna hamper them a little bit in in FPL. So. I have Gabriel and I have uh, Saka currently, but I'm, I don't know. I think thinking about Saliba, I probably should have brought him in this past game week, but I'm probably not getting him anytime soon. And I was looking at potentially Odegaard, but I'm not sure about him either. But yeah, they have some interesting assets, but I think Saka and Gabriel for now is is fine for me at least. Um, Saka, on the topic of Saka, are you thinking about bringing him in or is it just too late because you have to get Game Week 29 team in order? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. Yeah. I'm going to do both. <laughs> I mean, you could. I think he could uh, pay you back in these next few game weeks because they do have some nice fixtures. Three, oh, it sucks. three goals against Newcastle. You can expect him to score at least could one. Could get rid of Palmer. Could do it. <clears throat> Palmer's great. I'm, I sold Palmer, but I'm regretting it already. He's just too good. One of the players of the season. By the way, just quickly, just um, off the top of your head, who would be like your top five or top three even for player of the season so far? Ooh, that's tough. Um, like one, two, three? Yeah. I think. We just mentioned like four or five names that you think have been standouts or something. It doesn't even have to be like, ranked. It's got to be Holland Salah for sure. Holland injured for so long. I, st- I mean, he's still top. Yeah, I'm still super impressed by that. Like the playing through injury and all this stuff. I still think it's impressive, but maybe yeah. not top. Salah definitely. Salah definitely. A- he's, he's like one goal away from top scorer and one assist away from top assister or something. So, yeah. Um, Ollie Watkins. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, Big Phil. Foden. Definitely, yeah. Um, and I think I'd say, um, have I said Saka yet? Saka for sure. Saka, yeah. Step up yeah. lately at least, but I'd say yeah. over the course of the season, Declan Rice has been better for Arsenal, but well, I think Declan Rice should be there too. Yeah. Yeah, Declan Rice. Cole Palmer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening like 11 now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, There's yeah. been a lot of fun players this season. I I, I think it's been yeah. a pretty good season for that. So yeah. really impressed by Palmer uh, in general, at least. Um, really impressed by Tony, man. What the fuck? By who? Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony, yeah. Scoring goals left and right. Beast. He's going to score a couple against West Ham probably, but... We'll see what happens, but let's move on to the weekly Walker draft. I do not have to... He's going to score... Bicycle kick is maybe 
I don't have Tony in my weekly all-card drafts, but he was like the next striker, striker in line at least. But I feel pretty good about Watkins, Holland, and, and Solanke. I think those three guys are just pretty nailed for the future. And actually, like looking at who I would sell first out of those three guys, probably Holland <laughs> at this point. I I wouldn't be too against selling Holland in game week 29 uh, or 28 against Liverpool and then get Salah back for game week 30. Basically get the money to get Salah in game week 30. I, I think that's one of my considerations. But, but yeah, just comment on your uh, on this week look at draft uh, <laughs> after you've finished you're, laughing. You're Norwegian, man. Yes, <clears throat> and I'm going to get something to drink because I feel my throat is a bit bleh. So you do the talking about my team and uh, yeah, go through the players and how you like them, basically. Yep. Um, at number one, he skipped Saka. <laughs> and I spoke about Saka and saying that, yeah, I definitely consider bringing him in and he's put him at number one. So yeah, I'm definitely considering Saka. I think he's I had him for so long and then got rid of him chasing double game week points so for me yeah Saka I have to bring him back uh at number two Watkins yeah I think I can easily bring him in too it's uh (laughs) it's definitely time because he's been great for me he's been terrible for me it's just oh man Watkins should have been more patient with him so it's definitely someone I'm considering getting back um so Mikey, after City, man, you're back in the squad, back in the squad. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. Um, Ike Nuri, I mean, he sometimes plays like the Ferran Torres Neymar role. Why is he a left winger? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? <clears throat> um. Other than that, yeah, Odegaard. Great shout. Hanson, he's waiting for it. Penalties, yep. Always nice. Everyone else, yeah. Dowdy, nah. Yeah, Dowdy, I want to sell. <laughs> I did this before the injury as well, so. He's been pretty meh. Yeah, last three game weeks, or the last two game weeks has not been good. The last three matches. Uh, I think he's had, what, three points Nate total? Uh, Johnston. Something. Huh? Johnston. Yeah, Johnston goal. He started in the, in the first game after uh, against Everton, basically after Glasner took over for Palace. So um, I think it's been better than Henderson this season, to be honest. And they have some pretty good fixtures, but it's kind of a rogue shout, and I slightly hesitant about him potentially being the the guy for the whole season. But yeah, we'll see. Um, Neto is a, is a nice number one anyway. So yeah, um, it's just. Just a matter of getting like the best combination for the entirety of the rest of the season. Because if I was wildcarding now, I just want to get the two goalkeepers that I want to keep for the rest of the season, basically, and not think about goalkeeper transfers ever, uh, pretty much. So that's the thought process behind that. Uh, what do you think about Erdogan as a as a shout in general? Do you think he's been nice FPL wise and stuff, or is he just like not involved enough, not attacking enough in terms of in terms of goal scoring and, and stuff for you? I think that's when he starts playing his best football is when people are doubting him. So I think it's a good shout. He's proven it. Yeah. 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 I don't mind it, especially for the next few game weeks. And, and I quite like what I've seen from Arsenal lately, not the Porto game, I guess. I didn't watch that because I was watching Barcelona instead, but and Liverpool at the side, on the side. But, uh, but yeah, I think he's he's a pretty interesting player. Um, but he's number 12 for a reason, because I'm not entirely sure about him. Um, I think there are some other midfielders potentially you could go for. Brighton players, I was considering, but there are so many to choose from. Is it Mitoma? Is it Gross? Is it Adingra? Like, there's so many midfielders. March is going to come back at some point, and Cease is going to come back at some point. The Serbi just keeps rotating every single player that they have. So only one safe is Welbeck, basically, in that Brighton team. So... <laughs> FPL option. Welbeck, yeah. He's been good lately, so <laughs> even in FPL, which is crazy. But yeah, uh, speaking of FPL options, let's move on to your current plans for the next game week. And uh, yeah, your team is not looking the best for this game week. Um, you obviously are lacking three players or even four players if the Bruyne is out as well. We don't really know if the Bruyne is going to be out or, or not yet. He uh, didn't play in the second game, but... If it was just a recursion, apparently. 
Also, you have Ethan Pinnock, who's now apparently, <laughs> sadly for you, he's going to be out until after the international break in March, meaning he'll be back for game week 30, which is the game week after you need him in game week 29, basically. Um, so, <laughs> but I think with Pinnock, I, th- I, I did think about maybe adding like a another transfer, transfer out Pinnock uh, for minus eight, but I think maybe he has a quick recovery and maybe he makes it for game, for game week 29. For that reason, I would just probably keep him, but I don't know. Do you have any other plans for, for Pinnock or your team in general, or is it Darwin Watkins jotted the ball and then Pinnock someone you reckon? I knew your brother. Let's go. Yeah. He doesn't double in, or he doesn't play in 29, though. That's the downside. Most likely. Oh, my God. Uh, Unless, what could happen is if um, if Wolves lose to Brighton and Bournemouth lose to Leicester, then he will play. Interesting. Not going to happen, but interesting. <laughs> I guess another maybe 29 player. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like the easiest transfer would just be like straight up to Regulum instead. Yeah. He takes corners. He's pretty offensive. Almost had a goal in the, in the game against uh, Liverpool as well. It's time to go minus 20. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, any other players you are probably potentially looking to bring in this game week or what's the what's the plan here? Saka, baby. <laughs> it's time. I need you back. Saka Fuck in off. for Jota. Yeah, I or I don't think you have enough money to do the brain, that, man. Maybe bye. Goodbye, KDB hamstring. Okay. I mean, you sort of have to to like make a bet that the brain is going to play. I think for this game week, it depends on the news, obviously in the in the week, in the press conference and stuff. But I think you sort of have to bet on him starting that game, um, just to have a team to to be able to feel the team basically. You could also do Darwin to Solanke and save yourself enough money, maybe for Jota to Saka as well. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but that might be an option. But again, you'd bring in two players that don't play in game with 29, so that's not ideal either. So yeah, it's basically up to you. Anything can happen <laughs> in FPL, I guess. You're currently around 1.5 million rank. Uh, what's the goal for that? <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. I'm what's so the, much better than that. I'm what's the, so what's much the goal for the end of the season? Honestly, I'm so much better than that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I ended 1 million last season and now I'm 43k. So, yeah. Fortunes change. Yep. So, um, I think one of the things is not go so. <laughs> just like my shades today. Not be so maverick you about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some maverick moves because they could have been great. Could have been great. Like Darwin and Jota could have been excellent. But yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't work out as planned. But who knows? Things might mm-hmm. change in the future. Maybe Bowen is like the secret recipe to success because a lot of people are now like not looking at Bowen at all because he's been to be to be fair as a West Ham fan he's been really poor or West Ham in general have been really poor he hasn't really had much much to work with either uh, but yeah he's gotten 12 points in the last 6 game weeks so that's 2 points per game basically <laughs> the last 6 game weeks but Lucas Paquetá being back is going to help so much Kudus is already back that's helping already Michael Antonio is back that's going to help Calvin Phillips is suspended for the next game that's going to help uh, so there, there's a lot of positives for West Ham now coming forward. Going forward, uh, maybe also they changed their centre back pairing, which has been awful. Uh, Suma and uh, Agard, pretty bad this season. Mauro Panos is, is our best centre back by far, so <laughs> I should say something about West Ham's uh, defence. But yeah, Bowen might be might be the one. I actually think Bowen is a lot- Agard. <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. Uh, Bowen <laughs> is actually bring it, much better than bring him in the captain of next week. A guard? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's say that I thought it was a guard. Brentford. <laughs> what was the thing Kimo said earlier in the season? I don't know. It was something silly. <laughs> He's done a lot of like he bought in the core thinking it was uh, <laughs> it was Doku. <laughs> Doku. <laughs> Okay, a lot of stuff and the Corey was I actually love... amazing for him and then he sold the Corey yeah, before his 11 yeah, pointer yeah. and stuff and then and he got injured after that yeah and now he's Emo currently was carrying Dukes <laughs> now that guy is still like 100 points ahead of you 
Yeah, field. yeah, yeah. But... It's been pretty fucking. <laughs> it's been a pretty fucking dire times, bro. But uh, speaking of Kimo, keep smiling. Keep speaking of Kimo. Let's move on to his team. He's obviously the third founding member of the Field School Podcast. Um, he has a better outlook for this bro. Uh, next. Oh my god! Yeah, he has a better outlook for this uh, next uh, game week. So, oh my god! Huh? Saka was, oh shit, Saka! What have you done to me? Oh my god! I'm going minus twelve. It's quite a bit easier for Kimu. He has actually minus has a 12. playing team. He has a playing minus team uh, with a minus four. Darwin to Watkins and Jota to Wang Hee Chan. Pretty template moves, but to be honest, uh, no Darwin. Not Darwin to Watkins. He has Watkins, I think. Yeah, he has Watkins. Darwin, Darwin to Slanke is what I what I mean actually. Um, Darwin to Slanke and uh, Jota to Huang Hee Chan seems like the pretty obvious move, pretty template move as well. But he must turn into a pretty template manager, so I think he'd be pretty pretty <laughs> down for that. Uh, oh, you're, 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 it's true. It's true. He always goes with like the, the, the not template like captain. Doesn't like that. Doesn't like that. Doesn't like it, bro. <laughs> He's always going with the template move, so. Emo brother, are you going to stand again. for this? Are you going to stand for this, brother? <laughs> That's like, you better come on the podcast and defend himself then. But I yeah. think so. I think so. <clears throat> but yeah, the one last thing I want to talk about as well is no. the captaincy decision. We have Holani against Bournemouth away. Sock against Newcastle at home. Newcastle have been pretty terrible in general defensively now. And Watkins against Nottingham Forest at home. I think those are all pretty good candidates. So what sticks out as a captaincy choice for you, I guess, out of those guys? Because obviously for you, Pretty easy choice. It's all on, uh, unless it's Tony. And then for Kimo, it's probably between Holland, and Saka and Watkins. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think about those three guys compared to each other? Yeah, I think Holland is a good choice. <laughs> I think he's he's due to, due honestly like a goal explosion, and I think it's coming. And I think Bournemouth is a likely candidate of that. I think Watkins against a Nottingham Forest that likes to attack is. Always fun. I think there's going to be a lot of counter goals, which he can be a part of, winning some pens and stuff. So I think that's a good shout too. Saka is in great form, not the best today, um, but can easily, oh crap, uh, can easily get the results at home against Newcastle, who have been pretty erratic in terms of defending. So I think these, this works. And Handsome as all. Oh no. Yeah. I'm awesome. getting convinced Shame. over minus twelve. <laughs> minus twelve is uh looking spicy to me, brother. Huang against Sheffield United at home. That's yeah, nice. he's gonna get fifty points. Maybe. We'll see. They lost against Sheffield United last time. Wolves. I know. Just, uh, Assholes. The worst. Assholes. Um but yeah, how would you rank those guys then? Uh, one, two, three or one, two, three, four if you wanna add Huang into the mix uh, in terms of captaincy. Watkins, number one. I really say that? I really say that? No, it's got to be Hola. I think it's got to be Hola. It's got to be Kane. Watkins two, Saka three. Yeah, I think that's how I'd rank it. And Handsome a four. Yeah. When I get Handsome in and Captain in, and no one expects anything. (laughs) Yeah, I mean. It's the time to do moves like that, I guess. Um, yeah, it's time for some sideways moves, brother. Maybe that might be uh, that might be the case. But yeah, this has been a pretty quick and easy FPL School podcast. Uh, basically, both of us don't really have the most time to record this, so yeah, we're just quickly going through all the segments that we're going to. If you haven't done the manager of the week this um, FPL School podcast, I'm going to do that in the team selection video on Friday. So you can expect that later as well. Um, and of course, if you want to be the manager of the week, you can join the FPL Scope Mini League with the league code V9JT0D. And with that, my voice is almost gone because my throat is hurting a bit. I've been a bit sick lately. And uh, as always, I leave the last word to Kevin. So take it away, Kevin. Leave us off this quick and easy FPL Scope podcast. Come on, you blues. <laughs>